On primetime politics tonight, the Prime Minister and all but one cabinet minister skip the vote as the Liberal caucus lines up with the opposition parties to pass a motion calling on the government to label China's treatment of its Muslim Uyghur minority a genocide. I'll speak with China's ambassador to Canada for his reaction to the vote, and MPs will be here to debate the impact of the vote and how the government should respond. And our panel of parliamentary journalists will be here to discuss China and the upcoming Trudeau-Biden meeting. And let's begin tonight with that key vote in the House of Commons earlier this evening and a remarkable scene as Liberal MPs joined with the opposition parties to pass a motion by a vote of 266 to zero, calling on the Trudeau government to call China's treatment of its Uyghur minority in the western Xinjiang region a genocide. While the Liberal caucus sided with the opposition, the Prime Minister and all but one minister actually skipped the vote. Only the Foreign Affairs Minister was there virtually to abstain, exposing a clear split in the Liberal ranks. Many Liberal MPs also supported the opposition uh, to pass an amendment calling on the government to pressure the International Olympic Committee to move next year's Winter Olympics out of Beijing. The United Nations has accused China of holding millions of people in detention camps subjected to forced labour and forced sterilization. The U.S. has called China's actions a genocide, along with legal scholars and human rights organizations. But the Canadian Prime Minister has refused to go that far. Well, China has been pushing back against the allegations of genocide. And let's find out the reaction to the vote in the Canadian Parliament today. Uh, Tsang Peiwu is China's ambassador to Canada. He joins me now. Mr. Ambassador, uh, first of all, thank you for taking time to speak with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me this afternoon. Now, you watched the vote in the Canadian Parliament today. The vast majority of the elected representatives of the people of Canada believe your country has committed genocide against the Uyghur minority. What's your reaction to that vote today? We strongly condemn the motion. And I would like to point out that spreading lies runs counter to safeguarding human rights. Some people here in Canada and in some other Western countries claim there have been crimes of the century happening in Xinjiang. But actually, what they are hyping up are lies of the century. Because first, there is no genocide at all in Xinjiang. And I can share with you some of the facts and the figures. Well, Over the past 60 years, the Xinjiang, the life, Expectancy has risen, has risen from 30 years to 72, 72 years, and the Uyghur's population from 2010 to 2018 has increased by 2.55 million, from over 1, 10 million, uh, 10, 100, uh, from over just 10 million to 12.72 million. So that's an increase of 25%. That's much higher than the whole population in right, Xinjiang, but in, in, which in, 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 you, you, much higher than the Han Dan's, uh, ethnic group of 2%. All right, so but, it's not genocide at all. You saw the, you saw the, you saw the vote. Uh, so uh, clearly the Canadian parliamentarians disagree with you. Uh, the United States has taken a position on this. Um, so I, I'm not sure you and I are going to relitigate exactly what's happening uh, to the Uyghurs because I think uh, there's lots of world opinion that's, that's clear on that, and you dismiss that, I know. So one of the things the Canadian government is, is asking for is an independent investigation, allow an independent group to go in to that region and see exactly what is happening. Are you open to that? Will your government allow that? You know, Xinjiang is an open place for the outside people, and uh, from 2018 to current time, more than 1,200 people have been visited Xinjiang from more than 100 countries. They compose of diplomats, journalists, uh, representatives with religious groups, and uh, they saw with their own eyes what's happening in Xinjiang actually is driving prosperity. Right, and right but you, you know the criticism, Mr. Diplomat. Ambassador, is that those, those people have been... For the UN, that someone claimed that UN High Commissioner for Human Rights should be uh, there. And actually, we extended invitation to the Human Rights High Commissioner long ago. 
and uh, we are having this kind of uh, communication with okay. the office. Okay, let, let, I would like to suggest that we welcome people to, to be there. Okay, to let, visit. Me, let me come back. Yeah. To the, let me come back I mean, if I can, yes. Mr. Ambassador. Can I come back to the vote yeah. today? The Prime Minister yeah. and his cabinet, they did not vote. They abstained from the vote today. Does that make a difference to you that this vote is not endorsed by the Prime Minister, or do you view this as a decision taken by Canada, whether the Prime Minister has backed it or not? I think the most important thing is for the Canadian side to stop interfering in our internal affairs under the pretext of Xinjiang-related issues and the correct mistakes. And also they should discuss bias and the prejudice and to respect facts so as not to further damage our bilateral relationship. Right, but, but people in this country believe that, that uh, Western democracies don't just have uh, the right, they have an obligation to interfere in the affairs of other countries if they think human rights are being, uh, are being uh, sacrificed, or if, in this case, the Canadian Parliament has said a genocide is underway. Uh, what do you say to that? Because I believe when it comes to a human rights issue, it's the people of the country concerned which has the best say. So for the Chinese people, they are in the best position to judge the human rights record whether it's in Xinjiang or elsewhere in China. And we are in the best stage of human rights in the history. And that's also be, uh, I think, uh, proved by those people in China, because for many years, when it comes to the polling from international bodies, more than 90% of the Chinese people surveyed, they have high regard for the central government of China. Okay, let me come Sometimes back. Which... The number are even more than 95%. Okay, so we... that's... Peter. And uh, for people here, they should reflect on the human rights situation here in Canada and in other Western countries, like the suffering of the indigenous people in the past. Do you, uh, so let, let me come back to, are, are you saying you would be prepared to allow a delegation of Canadian experts to go into Xinjiang and examine what is happening there? You are open to that? We welcome those foreigners. We the idea of objectivity to be there to judge and to see for themselves. But we do oppose someone who has been trying to use the issue to uh, smear China. And okay. so for those who hold the view that China is guilty, even before they have been to Xinjiang, you know, that's very dangerous. And we Okay, so that sounds, that. so you're saying no to a Canadian delegation? I think if they are open-minded and with objectivity, certainly we welcome not only from Canada people, but elsewhere. And uh, as I told you, from more than 100 countries, a lot of people have been there and they have been given high remarks. What, do you, what are your expectations now of the Prime Minister? So we have a motion passed by the Canadian Parliament, but as I say, he and his cabinet abstained. What do you expect now from Justin Trudeau? How do you think he should respond to this motion? What I believe that is to urge the Canadian side to respect facts and to discuss bias and the prejudice and to stop anything that further damage our bilateral relationship. Let's talk about that. Let's, that's because that may be the most important part of our conversation. How will the vote taken in Parliament today affect Canada's efforts to win the release of the two Michaels, Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig? Those two Canadian citizens, as you mentioned, the resident Chinese authorities are handling the case independently and in line with our laws. So they have been detained and uh, prosecuted because of the crimes, suspected crimes, undermining China's national security. So that's the facts, you know. So there's nothing like uh, arbitrary detention, but uh, when it comes to the most incident, momentary incidents, that's really arbitrary detention because but she was detained while she was breaking no Canadian law at all. Okay, but so will, will, the will, will the vote in the Canadian parliament today hurt the chances of release of the two Michaels? As I just mentioned, the relevant authorities, the judicial organs in China are handling the case according to law, and they will continue to do so independently. Should Canadians expect retaliation from China for the vote today? Certainly we will take resolute measures to safeguard our national security, sovereignty, and the development interests. And for those efforts, which are aimed at disrupt our development, whether in Xinjiang or as a whole in China, they will be doomed to fail. And also I want to point out, because there's some part of the 
motion related to the Winter Olympic Games yes, yes. in Beijing. We firmly oppose that as well because it demonstrates once again that some people here in Canada and in some other Western countries are politicizing the issue of the Winter Olympic Games. And that's also against the charter of the Olympics. And I think for Beijing Olympic Games, it won high okay. recognition from the international community, including IOC. And even here in the Canada and in the United States, All right, we'll the have relevant to... committees are supporting that event. We thank will, you. We will have to leave it at that, Mr. Ambassador, but thank you for your time today and uh, we'll talk again. Take care, sir. Thank you. So that is the response from China to the passage of the motion in Parliament today, calling on the Canadian government to recognize China's committing genocide against its Muslim minority Uyghur population. From China, condemnation, a rejection of the notion that Canada could send in its own delegation to verify the accusations against China, and hints at retaliation. So what changes with the passage of the motion today? Let's bring in three members of Parliament to debate that. Rob Oliphant is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Eric Duncan is the Question Period Coordinator for the Official opposition conservatives and there were lots of questions about this today and jack harris is the foreign affairs critic for the ndp good to see you all gentlemen uh mr oliphant let me start with you i'll come back to the response from china in a moment but let me start with the vote today you supported this motion and I'm, i have to be honest i can't remember the last time i saw a caucus completely at odds with the cabinet on an issue so what does this vote say about the divisions in the government over how to deal with china I wouldn't say that was the case at all. Uh, the government, the cabinet members did not vote against this motion. Uh, what, what this was about today was a free vote. Uh, there was robust discussion within our caucus. We have been talking about this issue for some time and, and uh, people have coalesced around the idea that it is a good thing to raise the concerns that Canadians have about, their, um, about the way China is treating minorities, particularly the Uyghur uh, population at this but, point. But and a so lot of this, if I can, a lot of this is about optics too. Only, only Mr. Garneau even showed up to abstain. The rest of cabinet didn't even show up for the vote. It wasn't, a, it, it wasn't any case of China, but it was very clear that what the government decided to do was to abstain on the vote uh, because the government has a responsibility as well that is different from parliament. Mm -hmm. So parliament spoke today and they spoke to the government and the government's responsibility now is to listen to what parliament says, listen to what civil society says, engage with multilateral partners, multilateral okay. organizations, are, are the five eyes, the G7, uh, key like-minded countries and keep raising this issue. We've been raising okay, it, the government's been raising it for several years. So that's, that's and today, Today, Parliament spoke, and the government has a moral responsibility to listen to what Parliament right. says and to, to make our world so a better that's place. So how, that's how you view the instruction from the motion today. Mr. Duncan, a, a vote on a finding of genocide does call for action. So what do you now expect of the Prime Minister and his government as a response to this motion? Well, very disappointed in terms of the Cabinet not being there for the vote today. Uh, I like the fact and I respect the fact that the vote was unanimous, but the simple fact that the cabinet decided not to show up in abstention is in opposition to it. And look, Peter, this, these are not easy decisions to make calling this a genocide, but we're calling it what is happening in China. Not just Canada, the United States, both the previous Trump administration and the current Biden administration are calling it that. And more and more countries around the world are seeing the evidence of what's happening. Right. So and what do you, what do you believe this compels? What, what, what response do you believe this compels from the government? To call it what it is, to call it a genocide and to follow up. The cabinet should have been there in solidarity with the rest of the House of Commons today, calling it what it is. And as we said during the debate last week, we need to look at next steps. This is about the Olympics and uh, next year in the right for China to host them. We talk about sanctions. We talk about their role in the international community uh, as a growing power. Okay. We need to confront them. We need to call this out. And it's not just this one. This, the, the genocide issue is one uh, obviously severe and serious issue. But we go in terms of what's happening in Hong Kong, what's been happening with some of the suppression of information around COVID-19 and the okay. World Health Organization. At what point do we say playing nice with China and just sitting back and just trying to appease them is the answer. Let's, it's far from it. Okay, let's move to Mr. Harris. Uh, Jack Harris, what do you think of the split in the government side on this vote today? Uh, and w if you see it as a split and what needs to happen next as a response from the prime minister? 
Well, I'm not sure I see it as a split. It's, not, it's very obvious. I, I, I agree with the Rob that it's obvious what was going on. I mean, the, the free vote and the, the clear indication from all the members of Parliament to vote. I don't know what cabinet, other than cabinet ministers who stayed away. Uh, but there's a clear consensus in this country uh, by people representing their constituents that this is what uh, this is what we believe is going on in China. We've named it for for what it is, and it has to be uh, a very powerful statement that, uh, regardless of the support for the government, I would like to have had the government support this because it would give even more force to it. But we have to recognize that we, what we really want to accomplish through this effort is to put an end to the practices in China that we believe and we're convinced amount to genocide. We don't know the full extent or the full scope of it, mm -hmm. uh, but we do know that this must, this cannot happen with impunity. We do not want this to continue, and we need to find a way to ensure that other countries are going to get on board, other parliaments okay. are going to get on board. And, and do something together about this. But you have to name it first. So it's the very, very important first step. All right. Mr. Oliphant, China's ambassador to Canada is condemning the vote today and hinting uh, there could be retaliation of some kind. What do you expect we might see by way of retaliation? And how concerned should we be about the fate of the two Michaels? I don't think there was a single member of parliament that voted for this motion today to anger China. That is not our goal. Our goal is not to make a, 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 an enemy. Our goal is to encourage China to do the right thing and to, with, and to hold up human rights for their whole population. They, it is to, for them to live up to their international obligations uh, to protect minorities. It's to, to follow international rules-based order. That is our goal today. Our goal is right, to right, right, but the when the ambassador says, when the ambassador accuses the critics of spreading lies, it doesn't sound like you've made anything but an enemy there. Well, uh, uh, China, China will go through this process. Absolutely. I've read enough and I've spoken to enough Chinese officials to know that they will go through this process. And today what happened was Canadian members of parliament stood up for their constituents and that's our responsibility as MPs. But it's also the government's responsibility to ensure that we do this with multilateral uh, institutions, with bilateral partners. And right now, the Conservatives are proving that they're not fit to be government. That's what they're proving. This, there is a certain uh, diplomatic, international rules-based order, set of methods that governments need to do. And that's what Prime Minister Trudeau and his cabinet are All doing right, today. Mr. Duncan, I they, think they everyone... They will listen to Parliament. Hang on. They'll listen to Parliament right, Mr. and then they will move okay. out. Mr. Duncan, I, uh, look, at, uh, I think everyone acknowledges this is a delicate diplomatic situation with the detention of the two Michaels. How concerned are you that this motion will damage the efforts to free those two men? Well, I'll go back to, to Rob's point. The irony is today we led with the Opposition Day motion. We are the one that brought the Liberals to calling it what it is. So with all due respect, I think uh, being in government is showing leadership. And I think the fact we put this motion on the table, we had a debate uh, last week on this and we had the vote today, uh, I think will speak for itself. Regarding the two Michael situations, I agree. I, I think everybody's thoughts I know my constituents in Eastern Ontario are the same way of the situation, the ongoing situation with the two Michaels. Uh, and I agree with what Rob said, though. This is not about angering China, but it's letting them, letting China know, the Communist Party of China know, that we are aware of the information, we are aware of the injustices happening in the country, and that we need to take a tough approach to say, look, the, the U.S. administration, the U.K. Uh, government, different countries around the world are doing this. Canada needs to join that course. Right. The status quo is clearly not working. Mr. Harris, the uh, the ambassador did seem to suggest that uh, the, the two Michaels situation would follow the normal course of the Chinese justice system there. He seemed to, uh, to at least in some measure, uh, delink the vote from that today. Uh, but I, I, I know you said that parliamentarians hope this will draw other nations into making this same declaration or into putting pressure on China to let independent observers into the region. Is there a retaliatory danger, though, to Canada in being out in front on this, and should that matter? There, there is some danger, clearly, but and I'm uh, glad to hear that this, this being delinked from Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig's fate. Uh, that's another issue that has to be dealt with between the, between the parties, and we're hoping that there will be a solution to that. But, you know, the, 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 the follow-up has to be, you know, with, if the, the ambassador said, I think, believe you said at the beginning, uh, that, uh, you know, they, he wouldn't want a delegation from Canada to come because they've already made up their minds, etc. 
that seems to me that uh, if someone hadn't made up their mind, he's willing, or they'd be willing to have them go. Well, then that's exactly what we want. We want an independent investigation to take place. If they say this is not happening, well, then they should be able to, willing to welcome that. And we need to encourage them to do that. So this is about trying to find a solution that's going to change the course of, of uh, what is going okay. on and, uh, and and make sure that uh, what, what what is going on that's been identified does not, cannot occur with impunity and that uh, will not be the, allow other or encourage other nations to follow the lead in adopting similar practices. All right. That's what this is about. All right, gentlemen, uh, look, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, as I said, it can, it can be a very delicate situation. Uh, it's a, a major story that we are following in politics in this country today. And thank you all uh, for giving us your perspectives and we'll have a chance to uh, discuss it again, I'm sure. Thank you all. Thank you. I'm joined now by three colleagues from the Parliamentary Press Gallery. Susan Delacourt is a columnist for the Toronto Star. Joël Denis Bellavance is the Parliamentary Bureau Chief for La Presse. And John Iveson is a columnist for the National Post and Parliamentary Bureau Chief for Post Media. Good to see you all again. Uh, Susan, a, a fairly remarkable uh, day in the House of Commons watching this China vote play out. And I guess let's start there. Uh, so many Liberal MPs supporting the China genocide motion while the Prime Minister and his Cabinet decided to abstain from this vote. Uh, what's the Prime Minister's calculation, do you think, here? Uh, you're right. A remarkable split. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure I can ever remember one where um, it was everybody except the Cabinet. I don't, uh, as far as my memory serves, I don't remember anything like that. I guess what the calculation is, is uh, this allows the Prime Minister to tell China in whatever negotiations are going on with China over any number of things at the moment, look, um, the government is one thing and MPs are another. We sometimes don't distinguish that, but uh, Trudeau, I think mm. Trudeau is the one who drew this line obviously, and I'm assuming that it is has to do with ongoing negotiations over trying to get the Michaels, uh, the two Michaels out of detention, and any other number of things that uh, are on this government's agenda with China. A uh, very complicated story, and I sure. think that uh, it, it, it looks simple from, uh, from this vote, but it's... Uh, it tells me that things are complicated, as they say it is. Yeah, Joel Denis, what are your thoughts here? And it, it was—it sort of struck me in watching uh, this vote play out. Uh, as Susan mentions, you have uh, the caucus sort of going one way and the cabinet going the other way. Um, you know, how much do you think that played into it over the last number of days? They, the prime minister must have seen that his caucus wanted to go with this vote, uh, no matter what he was saying. Yeah, exactly. And I would say that there's domestic politics to it and international politics to it. Domestically, I think this, going to hurt, this is going to hurt the prime minister and his cabinet because the opposition parties all line up and the majority of the caucus of the Liberal Party said yes and voted in favor of that motion. So the prime minister will be accused of not having enough courage to denounce this situation in China as a genocide. Now, internationally, the prime minister, has met, I think I agree with uh, Susan, is trying to give himself some uh, margin of maneuver because facing China has not been very easy for the prime minister over the last few years. And the diplomacy, will how will it work? Now, the interesting thing to watch now is the uh, reaction from China. Yeah, well, we know that the uh, Chinese ambassador uh, ahead of... Yeah, that he was on our program warned. earlier, Joel Danini. He's not happy. Yeah. He's not happy and he was warning parliamentarians not to go in that direction. So now what will be the consequences? We'll find out in the next few days. Uh, John, what are your thoughts on how this all played out today? Well, I think as, a, as an act of political subversion, the uh, the Conservatives have done a good job. You know, it's a, a divide and conquer. You've you've got uh, you've carved off the op all of the opposition parties and most of the caucus, and left the cabinet stranded, looking kind of uh, unprincipled and unmoored. Um, you know, I think there are reasons. Obviously, that China's uh, behaviour here is abhorrent. I mean, there is clear evidence of sterilisation, which fits the bill as far as the UN definition is concerned. It means that you're trying to uh, stop births in, in, uh, in a given ethnic group. But at the same time, from a diplomatic point of view, I can understand why Trudeau's done what he's done. I, I don't think, from the Michael's point of view, that it would be productive. But I also think, you know, what next? You have, you have leveled the charge, the ultimate charge. You've essentially right. gone nuclear 
uh, in diplomatic terms, by levelling the charge of, of, uh, of genocide. Uh, most times genocide is levelled against when there's clear evidence of mass murder in the cases of the Holocaust, Rwanda, Bosnia. Uh, that's not the case here. And I think if you do level the charge of genocide, it, it does lead to the question, well, what next? What are you going to do? Yeah, it I guess. Su suggests you cannot, you've got to level severe penalties and it suggests you cannot deal with the Chinese. Yeah. And I think in the 21st century, not dealing with the Chinese is not a realistic proposition. All right, let's, let's uh, move along. But I think the, uh, to, to another story that uh, uh, we're following, uh, Susan, Justin Trudeau and Joe Biden will hold a virtual meeting mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Tuesday, and I suspect the China genocide issue will come up along with a uh, request for U.S. help in securing the release of the two Michaels from China. Um, what else is Justin Trudeau looking for from Joe Biden out of that meeting? Oh, I think there's a number of things that we've already seen that Joe Biden is supposed to be our friend, but he's got this Buy American um, philosophy and approach that is not helpful to us. Uh, Keystone, that's a lost cause. I take it that... Uh, when I was talking to PMO officials over the weekend, they said energy will come up, but, um, but I, I don't think uh, Trudeau has already spoken twice to mm -hmm. Joe Biden about Keystone, Biden's made his decision on that, that's gone. So, but I do expect climate to play a huge role in this. I think um, definitely the idea that um, Canada and the United States have got to work together on COVID and, and COVID prevention more than they have been, I think, but the, the real objective for tomorrow's meeting is to set a tone, is to show that the Donald Trump days are over. They, whether they do that really directly or, or with sort of subtle nudges right. here and there, but I think it's to say this is a brand new era in Canada-U.S. relations. Joel Denis, does it, do we need to hear more than that uh, from this meeting? I mean, there's a lot at stake uh, for Canada, but... It, I, I guess I'm wondering whether we've seen any indication yet that Joe Biden is better for or will be better for Canada than Donald Trump was. Well, that's a good point. And last week, remember that Mr. Biden participated in a G7 meeting and also uh, a multilateral meeting with European countries. And he said Washington is back. And one way to uh, uh, pursue that message is to work closely with Canada, which has been historically the, uh, the U.S. most closely allied. So that will signal that Washington is back working closely with uh, Canada. Out of that meeting, a few things that you should expect, Peter, is the following. Uh, the uh, Canada and the United States will sign a deal uh, to try to create a North American file for electric cars and also mm -hmm. batteries, manufacturing batteries that will produce and uh, augment, uh, increase the number of electric cars uh, on the highways in the United States and in Canada. So because we want to compete China on that regard, which, you know, uh, quite uh, heavily uh, um, concentrated on trying to build uh, low emission cars. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that will happen. And also on COVID, as, as uh, um, uh, Susan noted, we want to work more closely with uh, the United States on COVID vaccination campaigns and all that. So what will, whether uh, Michigan, um, the Pfizer of, uh, plant in Michigan uh, will be raised, that remains to be seen because we could uh, use more uh, vaccines, obviously, obviously right. from the United States. Although so far, Joe Biden's position has been to, to, to follow Donald Trump, John, and say uh, you can't have any of the vaccine produced in the United States yet. Uh, what are you watching for out of this meeting, John? Well, I think it will be a relatively comfortable meeting for, for Trudeau. I mean, it, it's, it's uh, I think, a good thing that it's the first one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, you know, clearly Canada was the first phone call that he made. Now now it's the first one-on-one -on -one meeting. I think there is a sense that we're back to a, an integrated North American economy, um, which I think we will see, you know, from a climate change point of view, this idea that you would have a, a periphery around North America of, of tariffs, essentially. And if countries who don't have any kind of climate policies, then they have to pay the tariff. Mm. I think uh, by American, we might see some sense that you know, supply chains are so integrated that you can't just cut off at the border and say that uh, goods coming from Canada will be subject to uh, to some kind of tariff or, or favoritism towards American companies. I think the, the integ integration is such that some kind of deal, so the same as uh, Harper and Obama struck, um, which essentially allowed the supply chains to continue regardless of Buy American. So I think it's, yeah. I think that it's, it's all going to be positive. I don't see any areas of negativity unless there is a, some kind of uh, vaccine diplomacy is played and, and America 
uh, starts to say that some of the suppliers who we've signed contracts with will not be sending uh, vaccine to Canada. Mm -hmm. That might be one imponderable. All right. Uh, look, we lots to keep an eye on tomorrow. Uh, thanks for your time today, and we'll be in touch again. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. That's our program. Thanks for watching.